Yeah, really, really interesting. Now, just uh, onto the ocean race a little bit. So Malama was built in 2021 after a really intensive two-year design and build phase. Um, tell me a little bit about the design philosophy and your work with uh, the maestro Guillaume Verdier. Yeah, no, it's been uh, it's it's been good fun working with Guillaume. He's a uh, yeah, he's a, he's quite the artist, and he's got a great group of guys around him. So it's it's been really fun. But uh, no, I mean our boat is 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 designed specifically for the uh, for the ocean race. I think most of the other designs out there do have one eye on the Vendee Globe, but our boat was yeah was with, you know the focus is the ocean race and uh, probably the first one of its kind to be launched with that with that in mind. Um, I guess what that term means in design terms is we're probably more worried about reaching an upwind, whereas the Vendée guys are, are more generally concerned about going downwind. Yeah. Although, uh, although actually it's it's quite interesting to see, you know, obviously like the the last generation of foiling boats or the the, the new boats from the last Vendée Globe were I guess fairly reaching orientated, which actually suits most of the racing very well, like the TJV and the Route de Ram and and most of the Amoka circuit. And then uh, I think I think probably last one day they kind of found their limitations when they went in the south and all of a sudden these foiling, very powerful foiling boats with quite straight hulls kind of struggled a bit in the big waves. So I think we've seen in the, the later boats coming out, everyone's looking to give themselves a slightly easier time in the south and be able to be sort of push slightly harder, be slightly faster in the south for these sort of newer scale designs and, and what have you. But um, whilst we've incorporated a bit of the sort of spatula bow shape in our boat our, our boat's certainly more looks like a boat that's designed for, for going upwind and reaching just as much as it's going downwind so i guess yeah we, we've we've tried to sort of cover more bases with our boat shall we say i mean they look they look brutal you know and and, and hard to sell some of the pictures of, of you guys in the um azimut defi race you know do you do you think with that big long southern ocean leg that um it's going to be you know it's going to be tough for, for these boats um, with that sort of design philosophy a bit more of an all-rounder compared to perhaps, you know, a full-on downwind boat? Yeah, I think so. I think it, it will be tough. I think it'd be tough for everyone, no matter what the design. But yeah, certainly, uh, you know, looking at some of these scale boats, I think they might have a slightly easier time in the south. Um, but I think for everyone, it's going to be, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to push 100% all the way through the Southern Ocean like we would in... Uh, in some other boats, just just because the nature of the class and the fact that the boats are quite fragile, and uh, you know we really need to look after them. So uh, it's going to be a big part of the strategy of this race is going to be knowing when to put the hammer down, push hard, extract all the performance out of the boat, and then and then when to sort of hunker down and uh, just get through the weather and uh, <laughs> yeah, wait for your moment. Yeah. So speaking of hunker, hunkering down, um, tell me about the uh, autopilot. Um, you know, I, I'm not absolutely familiar with the rules for, for the ocean race i'm guessing you've got you know a, a, an incredible autopilot there but can you can you utilize its full capability um in the ocean race um what's tell me about that yeah it's, no no we're um <clears throat> yeah in a similar situation to all the mockers out there racing now um i guess we've sort of been a few three iterations and ideas for the ocean race and at one stage it was sort of proposed that we were going to have like a heading only autopilot uh and then it was going to be a one design autopilot and now actually we're all sort of free just to make the the race as accessible as possible really yeah which is good and to all the existing boats and it's it, it would be a tough thing if you, you've learned to sail with one pilot and then you have to change to another one or something for the ocean race so it, it's all open now and yeah it, it's it's fair to say we've invested quite a bit of sort of time and energy and <laughs> then learning how to use that and uh and making the most of it i guess the nice thing for us in in ocean race configuration we're always you know there's always someone on deck there's always a sheet in the hand you know there's always you know actually there's you know in a straight line we'll sail with two of us so there's someone there with a sheet in the hand and the hand on the pilot so we we're com constantly updating the pilot but uh but yeah we, we we do have the nice you know personally we work with uh pixel Sumer, and then we have their their pilot on board and uh it has all the overlays so you can use heading and obviously true wind angle but then we have things like boat speed, heel, apparent wind angle that we can use as an overlay. So there's a there's a lot of inputs we can give it to try and get the best performance out of the boat. Yeah, it's really interesting because obviously, you know, you know in shorthanded configuration we're on the pilot, you know, a lot a long a lot of the time. And um but uh in in the ocean race, 
I suspect, you know, you're, you're, you're still going to, you know, have moments when you're driving and, and teaching the autopilot to drive better and better and better. I mean, um, or, 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 I mean, you've probably run the numbers now, you know, is any of the helms on board the boat better than the pilot? Um, I mean, honestly, we, we drive with a pilot most of the time. And, uh, the, the good thing about the pilot is obviously it's, uh, I mean, especially with the, the, our sort of transition to more sailing inside, it's actually like sort of hanging onto the tiller when you're inside and your, your sort of vision sort of a little <laughs> bit more limited. It's, it's actually like a, there's a lot of mental capacity just to keep the boat in a straight line and, and sail fast. Whereas if you get the pilot to do that and trim, that's probably a, you know, it's a, it's a much better solution. And, uh, but actually it's like, I mean, there's, there's people that go kind of naysay a little bit about the pilot but uh i mean for me it's been a really interesting challenge and i think it's you know being able to tell the pilot what you want it to do from what you're feeling is is on the boat is is, is as much as a skill as driving you kind of got to think about how you drive the boat and then try and get the pilot to reflect that so it's uh it's not sort of easier it's just kind of different you know I mean? yeah i mean I, I i can remember this conversation a few years ago where people were sort of saying oh it's you know it's a real shame we're moving away you know to, to different forms of sailing and we shouldn't be doing this but um but actually you know the autopilot is probably one of the you know it's not a bit like sales and everything else it's one of the key elements to get right in the shorthanded and and, and if you don't get it right you know you're not going to win these races so you know it's uh it's it'd be great to, to see the differences between you know the ocean race and and, and the Vonde of how much time on the on the pilot maybe as you say it's going to be very similar in the end yeah i'd, I'd be surprised if we see uh you know a lot more driving certainly how we've evolved to using the pilot pilot quite a lot um it's nice it's good as well the pilot never gets tired <laughs> <laughs> never gets scared or anything like that well which can be both good and bad but <laughs> yeah yeah but, now I, talking about restrictions are there any other restrictions in between the ocean race and 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 these sort of Vendée configured boats um in terms of equipment obviously crew numbers you know any budget limits anything like that uh no no i mean we're sort of limited on on how many sets of fours we can use the race thing we're limited to one and and then uh, and then backups which uh but I think the, the the foil things actually become a fairly self policing sort of area in the in the rule just because they're, they're time so to build time to build and, and the cost kind of means you got to be uh, you got to be pretty brave if you if you want to like press go on another set before you understand one set so the lead times are so long that we've sort of evolved into having having one set of foils and and trying to sort of learn them very thoroughly but um but really you know the the good thing is the rules between crude racing and uh, and the single-handed or short-handed stuff is uh, it's pretty much the same. The boats are very much the same. We'll carry a bit more safety stuff so in terms of life rafts and spare fuel and that sort of stuff. But yeah. actually, the boats have uh, they've managed to sort of converge the two rules. At one stage, we were looking at like a crude rule or some additional rules for crude stuff versus the the normal Amoka rule. Yeah. But we've actually kind of brought it's all been brought together by the class under under sort of one one set of rules which makes it makes it simpler and makes it easier to go between the two that's good so so potentially after the, the ocean race is finished um do you think for for the 11th hour team you'll switch back into some of the shorthanded stuff again is there a is there a vonde in you <laughs> i don't know about that i quite like sailing with my mates <laughs> but uh no i'm sure um we're not not quite sure what the plan is up for, for after the race at the moment. We're kind of we everyone's sort of very much focused on the in the task at hand at the moment. I think there'll be there'll be more time to think about what comes next down the road. But uh, no, there's definitely aspirations for for uh, for this team to to keep going. And uh, yeah, we've learned so much over the last few years. It's uh, it'd be nice to have uh, some mocker action going on going yeah. forward. Good, good. So final final question. Um, you're off to cascade tomorrow um final training period and then some christmas downtime or is it just work 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 no no the plan for us right now is yeah we're gonna try and uh try and leave Brittany. it's been uh like low pressure after low pressure <laughs> in the last week and uh it seems like the forecast is pretty similar for for next week so we're gonna try and grab a grab a break between the the heavy weather and get ourselves down south and then hopefully get a good few weeks training in um yeah we've learned a tremendous amount obviously and, and now it's just trying to sort of 
firm up our ideas and 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 sort of tidy up all our performance stuff. So we've got a few things we we still want to test and and just sort of just work on our baseline for performance. But what's quite exciting is yeah, we we know we got two weeks of testing and there's a few things we we know we're going to learn. We just want to sort of solidify a few other ideas. Yeah. We've also got new stuff to check off like like sales and what have you, which will be our race sales. So it'll be a fairly busy period. But I think what's quite exciting is in all the sailing we've done recently, we've we've been very happy with our performance and we're going well against the other boats. But we also, uh, you know, we always come off the water excited about how much more there is still to learn. So uh, yeah. yeah, hopefully we can sort of you know get get ourselves in a solid position before the start. But uh, yeah, we're we're also you know very very uh, mindful of the fact that we're going to keep learning at quite a pace. That yeah. said, we also know the other guys are going to be, you know, with less experience of their boats, are going to be learning even faster. So uh, it also make, almost makes it more important that we keep keep learning and keep improving. Yeah, d- absolutely. And and team wise, uh, you know, you're, I guess you've got a, a bit of a squad for the for the ocean race um, because of the nature of it. But you know, you, you're, you're you're sort of starting lineup. Um, who 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 are you going to be sailing with? Can you can you tell us? Yeah, yeah. Starting, it'll be it'll be the team that's been on the boat a bit re- recently. Sort of uh, Charlie, myself. Uh, we've got Jack Butel in the team, and and Francesca. I think we're, that's the, hopefully probably going to be our starting line. And I can say, and then and then Justine will, will join us for the second leg and uh, and to be the south. So uh, yeah, and and our plan right now is sort of to to, to work with that core team for for much of the race. But we've got a few a uh, few guys uh, who we can call up on if we need some uh, reinforcements on the back half of the race or, or, you know, whenever, whenever is needed. So, uh, now hopefully we're in a strong position. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, the very best of luck, mate. Um, we'll Thank be watching you. very closely and I hope you get some time off uh, with the family over Christmas. Um, thanks, yeah, thanks yeah. so much for joining us this morning. It's been fascinating. No problem. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> All right, mate. Have a good one. Good luck tomorrow. Cool. Cheers. Thanks mate. Good Bye-bye. to talk to you. Take care. Cheers.